prescribed and captioned media program in the classroom and online. DCMP.org. Titles William Joseph Heinemann presents The Jackie Robinson Story. Copyright 1950 by Jewel Pictures Corporation. Starring Jackie Robinson. With Ruby D, Minor Watson, Louise Beavers, Richard Lane, Harry Shannon, Ben Lessie, Bill Spaulding, Billy Wayne. Written by Lawrence Taylor and Arthur Mann. Music score, Herschel Burke Gilbert. Orchestral arrangements, Joseph Mullendor, ASMA. Music supervision, David Chudnow. Associate producer, Joseph H. Nadel. Director of Photography, Ernest Laszlo, ASC. Production designed by Boris Levin. Film editor, Arthur H. Nadel. Dialogue director, Ross Hunter. Sound recording, Ben Winkler, Mac Dogleash. Technical supervisor, Arthur Mann. Produced by Mort Briskin. Directed by Alfred E. Green. A black boy walks along a road. This is the story of a boy and his dream. But more than that, it is the story of an American boy in a dream that is truly American. The year 1928. The time, spring. If you were a young man, your thoughts were undoubtedly turning to those of love. But if you were a young boy, your thoughts were of one thing, baseball. Several boys run out onto a baseball field with warehouses and parking lots in the background. As they line up around the base path on either side of second base, at home plate, a young man tosses a baseball to another. He hits it with a bat. A boy crouches and stops the ball with his glove, then throws the ball back, where the first man catches it and tosses it to the batter again. The batter hits it again, and the ball bounces past another boy. The first boy stops it. Great bunch of infielders we got. Yeah, big leaguer. Catching the ball in his glove, the first man tosses it again. Hit me one, mister. They turn to a black boy. What do you want? Rounders, fly, anything. Watch this. The batter hits the ball hard, but the boy stops it easily and throws it back. Yeah, How's that for a ball player? Yeah, well, we ought to give him another chance. Hey, kid, you want another? Yes, sir. Here it comes. When it's hit again, the boy jumps in front of it with no glove and throws it right back. Hey, kid, come here a minute. The men look at each other as the little black boy walks to them. Now, don't tell me that one didn't sting. Just a little bit. Hadn't you got a glove? No, sir. Come here a minute. Handing the bat to the other man, the batter leads the boy to a car's trunk, which he opens. He pokes at the stuffing of an old, torn baseball glove inside then picks it up and hands it to the boy. You mean I can borrow this? No, you can have it. For keeps? For keeps. Yay! Beaming, he runs off with the glove. <laughs> to the back of a house. Mom! Mom! Yes, Jackie? Look, Mom! Where'd you get it? She spots a rip in his jeans. Oh, torn. You can sew it up. Oh, Jackie. She hugs him. <laughs> Pages of calendars fall as time passes. Jackie walks on a trail, tossing a baseball into his glove. More calendar pages fall. The title, 1932, moves up the screen. A little older, Jackie crouches at a box, shining a man's shoe. More calendar pages go by, as does the title, 1935. Older and taller, Jackie hangs his glove on the handlebars of a bicycle and puts a bundle of newspapers in a basket on the back. He retrieves the old glove and puts it on his left hand, then mounts the bike. The calendar pages keep going, with the title, 1937. At home, Jackie's mother places letters on a piece of clothing. Jackie! Now an adult, he steps in from the kitchen. Yes, Mom? Sew them on like that? No, Mom. The way you have them now read, Junior, pass it into college. He switches the letters J and P. That way, Mom. Pass it into Junior College. Of course. How'd I get it mixed up like that? She pins the letters in place. Yeah, they wouldn't know who I'd be jumping for to track me tomorrow. Is that what your brother Mac want a medal for? Is that what you're talking about? I want a medal? <laughs> Mom, when Mac jumped for passing a junior college, he broke the national junior college record. And nobody has jumped that far since. That's nice. Jackie smiles. 
The newspaper headline reads, Jackie Robinson breaks broad jump mark. Later in the office of William Spaulding, UCLA Athletic Department. Bill broke his brother's record. Do you think maybe he could uh, jump over that Southern Cal line? He led the conference in TDs. Only there's one problem, Bill. Oh, you mean the Trojans have already got him? <laughs> no, no. No, he's a colored boy. And I heard somebody squawking about giving colored boys too many athletic scholarships. Colored boys are all right with me if they're the right color. The right color? I like a good, clean American boy with a B average. That's the kind of a boy you're talking about. His colors are blue and gold. UCLA colors, huh? That's right, and you can tell it to Robinson for me. The man shakes Bill's hand. Another newspaper headline reads, UCLA lands all sports record holder. Bruins stock soars as Jackie Robinson accepts scholarship. In a football game, Jackie runs down a field with other players chasing him. Later, a receiver for the other team catches a pass and runs for the sideline. Watching from the stands, Come on, Jackie. Come on. a white man turns to the cheering black man sitting with a black woman. Hey, you're his brother, aren't you? That's right. You're Mac Robinson. I ran against you when you were at Oregon. Oh, sure. You ran for Southern Cal. Pete Shubank. Yes, you can. This is my wife. Hello, Mac. How do you do? This is Ray Iverson, Jackie's girl. Hello. Glad to know you. What are you doing these days, kid? Oh, I got a good, steady job. Glad to hear. They turn back to the action. Come on, Jackie. Jackie gets the ball and runs at the other team's defense, getting tackled. Two defensive players climb off Jackie, who gets to his feet with two teammates helping him. Afterward in the locker room, the trainer massages his back. Easing up? Yeah, a lot. I don't know what's the matter with those guys out there, giving it to Jack like that. Just because, because he's the best half back on the field. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. And Jackie, I wasn't kidding about that either. They certainly have a lot of respect for you out there. I have a lot of respect for them, too. Believe me. He favors his lower back. How's Mac been doing lately? I always liked Mac. Mac? Well, Mac's doing fine. Later, American and California flags fly above the campus of UCLA, where students enjoy a sunny day. Jackie sits on a bench, writing in a book as Ray approaches. Been waiting long? And sits with him. No, just got here. Somebody told me you got an honorable mention on the All-American. Did I? Somebody else told me you cut class this morning. Could be. Was it because you worked late last night? And because I went to see about a better job, a full-time job. Why now? You've still got some time before you graduate. If I graduate. Oh. Suppose I finish out the year. I'm no further along than when I started. No closer to getting a half-decent job, so I can afford to get married. Who are you thinking of marrying, Mr. Robinson? Oh, you know who. Your mother will take it hard if you quit school now. Yes, I know. You ought to talk to her before you do anything, and to Mac. Yeah, it was Mac I was thinking of. Later at home, Jackie helps his mother make sandwiches. Well, if you just wait till June and get your diploma, a lot of good a college education did Mac. Well, Mac's all right. He's got a job. Yeah, a good steady job. At night, broadly built in a light-colored suit, Jackie carries a lunchbox on a city sidewalk. He pauses. Hey, Mac. Sweeping the street in a uniform, Mac turns to him. What are you doing here this time of night? I fix you some lunch. Here, catch. He tosses Mac the lunchbox. Man, that's really smart signal calling. Jackie approaches him. I thought you'd be hungry. I'm always hungry. Sit a while? Sure. They sit on the curb, and Mac opens the lunchbox, unwrapping a sandwich. Anything bothering you? I want to quit college. Right after the basketball season. What for? I got to get a job. I want to marry Ray. School's one thing, but you and Mom can't support Ray, too. Can't wait till you graduate. What good will a degree do me? They're not hiring colored football coaches. Not our color, anyway. Don't you want to play baseball this season? What good will that do me? Baseball's one sport they'll never let me in. Yeah, that's your best sport, too. I wonder if there's any place where they will let you in. Mac kicks at his dustbin. There's one place nobody draws a color line. Yeah, great job for a college man. 
may not be a great job, but it's steady. He takes a bite of the sandwich. Later, in a UCLA basketball game, Jackie takes a pass and jumps to score a basket. Title, UCLA 18, visitors 10. Jackie makes another basket to bring the score to 20, and another for 22. Dribbling, he makes an easy layup to raise the score to 24. Later in the locker room... Nice going there, Hat, Jackie. Thanks a lot. What's this I hear about you quitting? Yeah, right after the basketball season. We'll miss you, fella. You got a job lined up? No, not yet. What about those letters we sent to the high schools? Any answers? Three. What'd they say? Well, the first school didn't want me for a coach. The second school didn't want me for a coach. And <laughs> the third school, they just didn't want me. Later, Mac enters the house with mail. Any mail for me? Five more letters. Business must be good. Let's open them. He gives Jackie a couple envelopes. And they both start opening, taking out letters. Pickwick College doesn't want any coaches. Bainbridge either. Hard news says sorry. Western State, no soap. Uh-uh. You got a job, brother. I have? What does it say? Mac opens the letter. Listen to this. From the President of the United States. Greetings. Later, in the nurses' quarters of Harlem Hospital in New York City, Ray sits with another woman by a photo of Jackie in military uniform. He sure writes interesting letters. Oh, yes. Listen to this, Mildred. She reads. The other day, my commanding officer called me in and told me the good news. So I'm some kind of athletic director at last, even if it's for the Army. Sounds like he's happy. And he looks good, too. She pulls out another photo. In his new picture. And a lieutenant now. That's a mighty fine job. Later, Times Square is filled with revelers as a sign announces Japanese surrender. A huge newspaper headline reads, War Ends. In uniform, Jackie unpacks at home. Why can't this wait till later on? Dinner's almost ready. It'll only take a minute, Mom. <laughs> That's just like you. The first thing on top is your glove. What are you going to do with it? I don't know. Don't know if I'll ever do anything with it again. Uh, more mail again. Mac unfolds a letter. I bet you spent 50 bucks on stamps. If it gets me a job, it'll be worth it. I'd hope Polly doesn't want any coaches. I could have guessed that. Mac opens another one. Hey, wait a minute. What is it? A job. Not the president greeting me again. No, but you read it. Mac hands it to him. Later, a sign reads, Baseball today, Panthers versus Eagles. In a dugout. Robinson, you're up next. Pick up the one you like and give it a ride. Yes, sir. Now batting for the Black Panthers, Jackie Robinson, shortstop. A crowd of only black people applaud as Jackie steps to home plate. The catcher calls to the pitcher. This is a new boy, Samson. Take it real easy with him. Nice and easy. Let him hit it. Yeah, I do that little thing. Also black, like the pitcher, umpire, and all players, the catcher puts on his mask. It's right up for you. The first pitch makes Jackie fall back to duck it. Right. Let me help you up, Mr. Robinson. The catcher helps him up. Goodness, I don't know what's wrong with that pitcher today. You had not to do that, Samson. You make this boy mad. Nice and easy, I said. Samson winds up, kicks one leg and pitches, making Jackie fall again. Oh, what's wrong with that boy? Samson grins, and Jackie stands. He's incorrigible, that's what he is. Incorrigible. Right here now, man. Samson winds up in a windmill motion with his throwing arm. Kicks his leg and pitches. Jackie swings wildly. And alive, you sure swing pretty. With his own grin, Jackie gets ready again to hit, holding his bat high. He hits the ball and runs to first, then keeps running to second base, where he slides to miss the second baseman's tag. You should have done that, new boy. I thought we were going to be friends. Jackie laughs, then steps away from second with legs wide, ready to run again. Samson glances at him, and as he pitches, Jackie runs to third base. He stands ready again on the other side of third. Samson pitches wildly as the catcher chases down the ball. 
Jackie slides into home plate. Later on the team bus, Jackie sits across the aisle from a dozing teammate while other team members hum behind them. Hey, that's enough of that. How about shortening bread? Never mind about shortening bread. How about some ham and eggs, Skipper? Yeah, that's a pretty good idea. How about something to eat? Oh, okay, yeah. okay, we'll stop at the next drive-in. Is it always like this, sleeping on the bus? Most of the time. We sleep, and we eat, and we play ball. Then we get on our bus and do it all over again. You got a cigarette? I don't smoke. That Ernie, always begging cigarettes. I can't afford to buy them. Why not? Don't you get paid like the rest of us? Yeah, I get paid a little. I've got a wife in Birmingham and I have to send her every buck. Got a new baby coming in a couple of weeks, too. Sure wish I could be there. Well, why don't you take a week off and go? Can't. Haven't got the money. After what I send home, I just managed to make it to payday. You're breaking my heart. Here. Ernie grabs cigarettes and the others scramble for them. Back. Later at night, the bus stops outside a building. Who's going in? New boy's turn. Rules and regulations. New boy always goes first. I guess that means you, Jackie. Well, what will I have to do? Three things. See if we can eat inside. Two. See if we can wash up. Three, if we can't eat inside, see if they'll fix up sandwiches. Jackie nods and gets up, walking down the aisle. The bus door opens, and he steps out. He opens the building door and steps into a diner, where a customer sits at the counter reading. He glances at Jackie. He steps toward a man behind the counter. Yeah, what is it? Sixteen of us outside in a bus. How's chances of getting something to eat? Well, uh, I'm all alone here. Fred, I couldn't help you. How about some sandwiches? Could we have sandwiches? Well, I, uh... He turns toward the kitchen, where a cook looks out. How many of them did you say? Sixteen. Well, I can make you sixteen beef sandwiches and maybe the same in ham and egg. That do you? Swell. How about some fried potatoes on the side, Chef? Yeah, take about 20 minutes. Thanks. He turns to the man behind the counter again. Do you suppose we could wash up a bit? Sorry, it's out of order. Jackie walks away from the counter to the door, which he stands beside to wait. Later in a team locker room. Say, hey, Ernie. Yeah. When are they going to give me a contract with the team? Contract? You want to know about contracts with this team? Yes. Say, fellas, this man wants to know about contracts. A contract? Fix you right up with the information. Yes, sir. Contract. Tell him about that boy. You want a contract with the Panthers? The first thing you got to do... He checks the coast is clear. Is borrow some money from the boss. Then you know you got a job until he gets paid back. If you can get in the lane, you to get us. Yeah. And you got to keep your eye on the grandstand. When you got a good day and a good crowd, that's a good time to hit him up. You owe him a week's salary. That means you got a one-week contract. When you're in for two, that means you got a two-week contract, sir. Possibly. The manager steps in. Hey, you guy. Let's get up and get out of here and get a little work. Come on. The players head out. Later, a sign reads, Baseball today, Panthers versus Eagles. On the field, a batter stands at the plate with the defense waiting and lets the pitch go by. Strike two! Three white men sit in the crowd watching. You're out. Well, that's a ball game. Boy, that Robinson sure had a good day, didn't he? Sure did. The two white men step past the third, who writes something on his program, which he tucks under his jacket. The Panthers return to the locker room. Jackie turns to the third white man. Robinson, can I see you? I'm Clyde Silkman of the Brooklyn Dodgers. Jackie smirks. I'd like to talk to you for a minute. What about? About you. Branch Rickey would like to see you. He would? Do you think you could get away for a day starting tonight? I guess so. Good. I'll take care of the tickets. Now you meet me at the Union Station at 7 o'clock, the New York Gate. Is that okay? Sure. That's great. Sukforth leaves, and Jackie shakes his head. Hey, who's your friend? Scout for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Oh, sure. They signed me for the New York Yankees once. They were going to give me a bonus to pitch for the Red Sox, and then this keeper came. Some guys think they're funny. Yeah, 
You can say that again. Later, Jackie sleeps in a bed. He sits up. Yes? Robinson, Clyde Soupman. Coming. Getting out of bed. He steps to a door and opens it to Sukforth. I don't understand this, Robinson. Don't you have a good mind or are you playing coy? I waited for you till I missed the train. What's the idea? You don't mean you're really with the Dodgers. Later, a train rounds a curve. The sun shines on the skyscrapers of New York City. In the private Brooklyn baseball office of Branch Rickey, Jackie stands before a desk. Sitting behind it, an older man lights a cigar, holds the flaming match, and blows it out, tossing it away. You got a girl, Jackie? Sukforth sits nearby. Well, uh, I don't know. What do you mean, you don't know? Traveling around all the time and not riding as often as I should, I think I still have a girl. Good. You'll need one. You know why we brought you here? No, sir. Not exactly. But I heard you were starting a color ball team. Is that it? No. You were brought here to play with the Brooklyn organization. Montreal, to start with. Jackie glances at Sukforth, who nods. Me? Play for Montreal? I want to win pennants, and we need ball players. The war set us back a little. So three years ago, the Brooklyn Dodger management decided to scout untapped sources of supply. Mexico, Cuba, all the Latin American countries, and our own country, too. That right, Clyde? From coast to coast. Yes, for players who can help us win. Many of the men we saw were good. Some had great promise, like you. You think you can do it, Jackie? Make good and organized baseball? If I got the chance? There's more here than just playing. I wish it just meant runs and hits and errors, the things you can see in a box score. <laughs> a box score. You know, a box score is really democratic, Jackie. It doesn't say how big you are or how your father voted in the last election or what church you attend. It just tells you what kind of a ball player you were that day. Well, isn't that what counts? It's all that ought to count, and maybe someday it's all that will count. That's why we brought you here. I want to see if we can make a start in that direction. It'll take a lot of courage. Yeah, it sure will. It might take more courage for the organization than for you, Jackie. Have you thought of that? I haven't thought of anything. It's all so sudden. Kind of hits me straight between the eyes. Just relax, boy. There's plenty of time. Pull up a chair and make yourself comfortable. Thanks. Jackie sits down, and Ricky stands. We're tackling something big here, Jackie. If we fail, no one will try again for 20 years. But if we succeed... If we succeed, Brooklyn will win a pennant. Yes, that too. But we're dealing with rights here. The right of any American to play baseball, the American game. You think he's our boy, Glenn? Well, he can run, he can hit, and he can field. But can he take it? That I don't know. What do you think, Jackie? Well, I can try. Think you've got guts enough to play the game no matter what happens? They'll shout insults at you, they'll come into your spikes first, they'll throw at your head. They've been throwing at my head for a long time, Mr. Ricky. Suppose I'm a player in the heat of an important game. Suppose I collide with you at second base, and when I get up, I say, you, you dirty black so-and-so. What do you do? Mr. Ricky, do you want a ball player who's afraid to fight back? I want a ball player with guts enough not to fight back. You got to do this job with base hits, stolen bases, and fielding ground balls, Jackie. Nothing else. Now I'm playing against you in a World Series, and I'm hot-headed. I want to win this game. So I go into you spikes first. You jab the ball in my ribs, and the umpire says out, I flare. All I can see is your black face, that black face right over me. So I haul off and punch you right in the cheek. What do you do? Mr. Ricky, I've got two cheeks. 
Ricky smiles. You want a contract with the Black Panthers? No, sir. We don't have contracts. Hey, any agreement, verbal or written, about how long you'll play with them? No, sir. None at all. All right. Clyde will give you a contract before you leave. Don't sign it right away. This is a very important move. Think it over carefully. Jackie stands. Is your uh, mother living? Yes, sir. She's in California. Call her up. Ask her advice. We'll pay the phone bill. Yes, sir. And Jackie, remember one thing. No matter what happens on the ball field, you can't fight back. That's going to be the hard part. You can't fight back. They go to a reception area. Helen, get Jackie Robinson's home in Pasadena, California. It's Sycamore 7 6459. Helen dials the number. At the Robinson home, crocheting, Mrs. Robinson glances at Mac, who gets up from a couch to answer the phone. Hello? Who? From New York? Y yes, put him on, please. It it's Jackie, Mark, calling from New York. Why is he calling? Is something wrong with him? Just a minute, Mark. Hello? Yes. Jackie? How are you, kid? Are you okay? He's okay, Mom. She sighs. You want to talk to Mom? Oh, sure, she's right here. She wants to talk to you, Mom. He gives her the phone. Hello, Jackie. You all right? You got a chance for what? Oh, I can be the first Negro to ever play an organized baseball, Mom, if I'm good enough, if I can make the grade, only I'll be taking a big chance. She turns to Mac. Mac, they want Jackie to play baseball for, for Brooklyn. They do? Yeah. Well, Jackie, I don't know what kind of advice to give you, only, only there must be churches in a big town like New York. Why don't you go find yourself a church and talk to the minister and see what he has to say? And Jackie, any time you have a real problem, listen to God a while. Here, talk to your brother Mac. He knows more about baseball than I do. She gives back the phone. Later, at a church on a street corner, Come in. Jackie enters a pastor's office. Are you Reverend Carter? That's right, son. My name's Robinson, Jackie Robinson. Glad to know you. They shake hands. I need some advice, important advice. I suppose we sit down and talk this thing over. You are new to this part of the city, Mr. Robinson? They sit. I'm from California. I came to New York yesterday to see Branch Rickey. Rickey? Do you mean, uh, Mr. Rickey, the baseball man? Yes. I'm a ball player, Reverend. I've just learned that the Brooklyn Dodgers have been scouting Negro ball players for a couple of years. And Mr. Rickey thinks I'm good enough to... Well, Reverend, it just means that a colored man will be able to play on the same field with a white man for the first time. Uh, who goes out to these ballparks, Jackie? Just white men? No. Anybody can buy a ticket, Reverend, colored or white. Uh, tell me, Jackie, what do you think would actually happen if you were to get out on a white baseball field? Well, I don't know. They might call me names. They might even beat me up. I, I don't mean what would happen to you, Jackie. I mean, what would happen to the colored people? Might start fights. Might even start a riot. That's true. On the other hand, every step forward for our people has started a fight somewhere. For the time being, anyhow. This is a big thing you have to decide, Jackie. And not just for you alone. It's a big thing for the whole colored people. I know. That's why I came to you for help. A great deal depends upon you, Jackie. What kind of a man you are. I suppose upon what kind of a ball player you are, too. Well, I don't know what kind of a man I am, Reverend, but uh, I think I'm a pretty good ball player. It might help. Yes, it might help a great deal. Maybe God will help a little, too. Jackie thinks. Later, headlines read, Negro signed for Dodger Farm, Robinson to play for Montreal. 
a city park on a sunny day. Jackie walks with Ray. It's wonderful to see you, especially when I had almost given you up. I should have written oftener, but you know how it is. We keep waiting for good news, something worth writing about. And then when this big chance came, I didn't want to tell you about it. I wanted to be sure I had the contract signed and everything. You know, sometimes when you wait for real good news, you wait forever. I guess so. I don't want to wait forever. Look, let's sit a minute. Let's talk it over. All right. It's going to be real tough for a while. A lot of people don't want a Negro in baseball. I know. They sit at the edge of a pond. As soon as I make it stick, I'll come for you. We'll get married. No. Not after you've made good, Jack. Now, before you stop. I can't let you do that, Ray. I've got to go south for spring training. I'll have to face that. It might not be easy. It'll be easier if we face it together. There won't be any picnic. You marry me now, and you're asking for trouble. All right, Jackie. I'll ask for it. He smiles and puts his hand on hers. Later, a bus speeds down a highway. In the back, under a sign reading, Colored sit in rear, Jackie and Ray sit close together. She smiles down at her hands, touching the ring on her finger. Jackie notices and smiles, too. Daytona Beach, next stop. Soon after, a black man stands waiting as passengers leave the bus. When Jackie gets off and helps Ray down, he approaches. Are you Jackie Robinson? Yes, I am, and this is my wife. Glad to know you. My name's Gaines. They shake hands. I'm an attorney here. Mr. Ricky asked me if I could help arrange accommodations for you. He did? Sent a man down about a month ago to look up a place for you to stay. I won. Well, that's very nice of you, Mr. Gaines. Oh, not at all. We're proud to have you. Your bags will be in the check room. My car's right off front. Later, a sign reads, Montreal Spring Training Camp, Sanford, Florida. On a baseball field, white players in uniform practice hitting and fielding. Also in uniform, Jackie steps through a gate and pauses, watching the practice. He walks forward. Holding his glove, he hesitantly steps past empty stands toward a lower metal fence, pausing again at a gate. He hits his glove and walks onto the field. Hey, Ravis. Then stops. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Do you think there's going to be any trouble? He means trouble with the other players. Trouble? The only trouble I'm worried about, ground balls to my right. Do you think you're good enough to make the Dodgers? Don't know if I can make Montreal. Better concentrate on that first. What are you going to do if a pitcher throws a dust at your head? Uh, same as you'd do. Duck. An older man in uniform approaches. What are you sports writers doing up at this hour of the morning? Walking in your sleep? We thought we'd take a look at your new ball player, Clay. We'll take a look at him playing ball, not flapping his mouth with you guys. All right, Robinson, get out there. Throw a few. Loosen up your arm. Yes, Mr. Hopper. He leaves Hopper with the reporters. Mr. Hopper, do you think baseball will accept a colored second baseman? Hopper chews tobacco thoughtfully, glancing down. First, let's see if I will. He steps away. Jackie joins a line of three players fielding balls hit from a short distance away. The balls keep getting hit to the other three players. Jackie walks away. To another four teammates tossing the ball to each other at close range. Jackie joins them, but doesn't get the ball. He looks elsewhere and walks off. To two players throwing back and forth with another player crouched like a catcher. One catches the ball in front of Jackie's face. Have one. The catcher considers as Jackie stands with his hands out, then lowers them. The catcher throws to Jackie. He throws the ball back. The player beside him gets one. Jackie gets another, smiling. Later, a sign reads, Today's game, Montreal Reds versus Montreal Blues. The team in the field warms up, throwing balls around. Ricky is sitting on a bench with Hopper when a short player approaches. You want me to take the first one, Mr. Hopper? Or shall I hit away? Use your own judgment, Shorty. 
How's that high elbow coming? Do you keep you from hitting under the ball? Don't seem to work out like it should, Mr. Hopper. Of course, I don't pop to the infield anymore. I just fly into center field. Hopper nudges Ricky. Shorty's got a problem. He's built too close to the ground. But I got a new idea, Mr. Hopper. When I take the bat back, I'm going to hold it up like this. And that way, I ought to get come through a half inch higher. That her up? That's me. I ought to hit right on the line now. You watch. Shorty carries his bat away as Ricky and Hopper look at each other. Shorty steps up to the plate, tapping his bat with something he tosses away. He taps his bat with one foot, then another, and holds up the bat with very high elbows. With the umpire standing nearby, the pitcher on the mound winds up and pitches. Shorty hits the ball, which goes straight up high and falls straight into the catcher's mitt. You're out of there! Shorty shakes his head, and Ricky grins beside Hopper. All right, gang, say it up. Come on, Eddie. Get him out of there, Ed. Another batter steps to the plate, standing on the other side to bat left-handed. All right, gang. He takes a practice swing and waits as Jackie, playing second base, steps closer to first. The pitcher winds up and throws. The batter hits it to Jackie, who fields the ball and throws to first. Oh! Ricky smiles and nudges Hopper, who doesn't smile, but wipes his face and spits tobacco on the ground. Right, let's get this the next batter, who's right-handed, lets a high pitch go by. The catcher throws it back to the pitcher. The pitcher winds up and throws. The hitter holds out the bat and bunts. Jackie runs hard for the ball, picks it up and throws it to first. Ricky nudges Hopper again. Now he can hit like that, too. Hopper rubs his face thoughtfully. Later, the other team's catcher stands behind the plate as Jackie approaches with the bat. He stands at home and gets ready, waiting for the pitch. On the mound, the pitcher winds up and throws high. The catcher throws it back as Ricky and Hopper watch intently. Jackie lets the next pitch go by, too. The pitcher throws again. Jackie hits it and runs for first base. He's halfway to second when he sees the center fielder get the ball, so he goes back to first. Ricky nudges Hopper again. You get that? I got it. Later, the scoreboard shows the Reds leading the Blues 4-3 in the seventh inning, with the Reds batting. All right, Hank, this guy's got a hole in his bat. Let's get him out of here. The Blues pitcher winds up and throws. The pitcher gets the ball back, while Jackie stands in between first and second, ready to field. The left-handed batter waits. He hits the ball. Jackie runs toward first for it, stops and spins as he throws to first. He's out. No other human being could have made that play. Mr. Rick, do you really think he is a human being? Ricky stares at Hopper. Later on a porch, Ray does knitting with another black woman. I think Jackie's gonna like these. Knitting, knitting. Seems like that's all you ever do, Mrs. Robbins. Why don't you walk downtown once in a while? Or maybe take a ride to the beach? I'm afraid to. Afraid? No one's going to hurt you here. Not so sure. The last time I took a bus, I heard some white men talking about Jackie. About what they do if a colored man tried to play on this city's team. Oh, you know, they talk big, but they don't usually mean it. Maybe they don't usually. But sometimes they do. And some of the things they said gave me cold chills. Later, a sign reads, Exhibition Game Today, Dodgers versus Montreal. A team bus drives on the street then turns toward a curb to park. When it stops, the door opens, and the teams file out in uniform. They reach a closed gate that they can't open. One player spots a sign under the ticket window. It says, Cancelled, in accordance with City Ordinance Number 11725, relating to prohibition of sports events between white and colored. Jackie shifts uncomfortably. 
and Ricky trades glances with Hopper. Hang in the bus, boys. Hang in the bus. The players comply as Ricky tears a cigar and throws it down, then follows them. He steps to Jackie. Come on, Jackie, we don't want trouble. I'm the cause of the trouble, Mr. Ricky. Maybe you'd like to call it off. Maybe you'd rather I went back to the Panthers. Not on your life. We started this together, boy, and we'll finish it together. We'll complete the training season, and you'll complete it with... He pats his back. Come on. Later in the radio studio... And ladies and gentlemen, believe me, it should be the best welterweight battle in the past ten years. The announcer gets a new script. And sports fans, all is not so quiet on the baseball front as officials would have us believe. While there are no known organized movements against Montreal's Jackie Robinson, it is a fact that some cities are expressing pretty strong sentiments. So strong, in fact, that I hear the International League President Shaughnessy will make a significant visit to the Brooklyn Dodger office in the immediate future. Perhaps tomorrow. And now to answer some mail as time allows. A man enters Ricky's New York office and approaches his desk, taking off his hat. Branch. I've got to talk to you. Well, go ahead and talk. He gestures to a chair. French. Where he sits. The season opens in Jersey City tomorrow. Oh, I'm glad you told me. And this is your last chance to avoid a big mistake. Ricky shakes a cigar at him. Now, suppose you let me decide that. You'll break up the whole International League playing that colored boy. I've had letters, phone calls. I've even polled all the sports writers. What do the sports writers have to say? Jim Flanagan thinks you're even hurting the Negroes. This will stir up a lot of trouble. There'll be black and white fights about it all over the country, and you'll be sorry you ever started it. Frank, I've spent my whole life in baseball, and I've always been proud of that because I've always thought baseball was a fine game, a clean game. I've always thought it had a good influence on the American people, on the kids growing up. I've always thought baseball taught fair play and sportsmanship. But if what you say is true, then I've been all wrong. My whole life's been wrong, wasted. Tell you what I'll do with you. He stands. I'll go out to Jersey City with you tomorrow, and we'll sit in a front box. And if anybody's got any rocks to throw, they can throw them at me. Later in a hotel room, Ray unpacks a suitcase with Jackie. He takes his glove from her, and they smile. He puts on the glove, then punches it. Are you nervous? A little, maybe. But I won't be when we get on the field. Another hour and it'll begin. Would you rather I didn't go? No, you might as well come to the game. If I'm going to fall on my face, it might as well be in front of you, too. You won't fall down, darling. I won't have trying will do it. You think I can run? Wait till you see me run this afternoon. I can't break in with just a scratch hit and a fielder's choice. I've got to set them on their ear. I've got to be the best ball player they've ever seen anywhere. She pats his arm. That's his spirit. Later. The seats are full at the stadium. And a microphone in the press box. And that's a fact, ladies and gentlemen. 25,000 people are here to see baseball history made today at Roosevelt Stadium in Jersey City. For this, the opening of the 1946 International League season. Even though the ball game has started, excited fans are still crowding into this huge concrete horseshoe. It's a holiday throng, eager and expectant, but with one thing in mind. What will the highly publicized Jackie Robinson do today? Will organized baseball's first Negro player make good, or will he fail? You fans out there, what do you think? Ricky leads Shaughnessy down an aisle to seats in the front row. They step into the row and sit down. Jackie stands in his second base fielding position. A Jersey City batter waits for a pitch. When the pitch comes, he lets it go by. Jackie bends, resting his hands on his knees, ready to go. The Montreal pitcher winds up and throws. The ball is hit toward Jackie, but dribbles past his glove. Jackie runs back to get it as a runner crosses home for a Jersey City run. In the front row. Well, I guess he's got the jitters. Well, anybody can make an error. That was an awfully easy chance. Later in the press box. Well, as the poet said, to err is human. And Jackie Robinson proved himself indeed a mortal man in the first inning by booting that easy play, permitting Jersey City's first run. But 
The game is young, fans, and so is Jackie. A Montreal batter is at the plate. The Jersey City pitcher throws. He gets the ball back. As Hopper and his team sit in the dugout. Jackie. At the end, far from the others, Jackie stands and walks by them to Hopper. You're up next. Get on deck. Yes, sir. He steps out of the dugout. He picks up two bats leaning by a fence. Then goes down on one knee to wait, the bats propping him up. He watches a hit ball go to a player in the outfield, who catches it for an out. The umpire sweeps dirt off the plate, then steps behind the catcher. Jackie walks to the plate, tossing one bat aside, and goes into his batting stance in the press box. And now here's the moment everyone's been waiting for. This big crowd is silent and tense as Jackie stands there at the plate. He's a right-handed batter, you know. Stands well back in the box, feet wide apart. Very good form. And every eye in this stadium is on that boy. Anxious. As Jackie stands there waiting for that first pitch. His team watches. Shaughnessy and Ricky watch. And Jackie waits. On the mound, the Jersey City pitcher nods to his catcher. Winds up and pitches. Jackie swings and misses. Ricky smokes a cigar, and Jackie waits again. The pitcher throws, and Jackie bunts. The pitcher runs for the ball and throws, but Jackie gets to first before it. Hopper rubs his face. Jackie shuffles a little towards second, ready to steal. The pitcher gets ready and throws to first, but Jackie dives back in time. He kneels and brushes himself off and touches base to beat another throw. The pitcher gets the ball again, and Jackie stands, inching away from first again. The pitcher glances back, but pitches to the batter, and Jackie takes off for second. He slides away from the catcher's throw. When the ball is bobbled, Jackie runs onto third base and gets there standing and safe. Hopper smirks as he keeps chewing his tobacco. Jackie inches toward home. The pitcher nods to the catcher. He goes into his windup and pitches. Jackie remains just past third. The pitcher looks at him, then turns toward the catcher. He throws to third, but Jackie gets there first. So the third baseman throws it back. Jackie inches away again. During the windup, Jackie runs and the pitcher throws to third. Hopper runs onto the field as Jackie goes back toward third. The umpire calls a balk on the pitcher for an illegal throw, so Jackie jogs past Hopper to home plate in his first run. Later, he stands at home ready to bat again. He lets a pitch go by. He swings the bat around and goes back into his stance. Many in the crowd are standing. Jackie lets another pitch go by. He adjusts his cap and smiling, gets ready again. With a Montreal player just past second base, the pitcher glances back at him, then pitches to home. Anyone who hadn't been standing does stand as Jackie's hit goes over the outfield fence for a home run. Jackie jogs around the bases. The third base coach pats his back as he runs past him to home, where another teammate shakes his hand. Later in the press box. Yes, sir, folks. It's a historic day, but a sad one for Jersey. There's two out in the ninth, and the score is 14 to 1, with a single Jersey City put out left. There it goes. It's a hard ground to Robinson's left. It'll be close, but he stabs it. Jackie goes to first for the out, and the ball game is over. What a memorable day, especially for Jackie Robinson. And for the president of the Brooklyn Dodgers, Branch Rickey. In the front row. That's the greatest first day any ball player ever had. Man, oh man. Four hits, including a homer, two stolen bases, and scored twice on balls. Yes, he played a great game. But, oh, that's the trouble with you, Frank. There you go, butting again. No. But you know where Montreal is playing next week, Branch. And they don't like colored people there. Here. Look at this. Shaughnessy shows Ricky a newspaper. Sports editor, the morning paper sent it to me. The headline. Riot threatened if Negro plays here next week. 
Later, the team warms up on the field for a game. In the stands. Ice and cold beer, 25. Hey, Park, give me a beer. Yeah, me too. How many all together? Make it three. I see you got a shine playing here this afternoon. Not me, brother. I ain't got him. You got him. I got him? I don't even live here. Where you from? I'm from Brooklyn. I drive a truck down here once a week. Huh? Well, when you get back home, tell Ricky that you spoke with a couple of friends of his nigger ball player. One runs a finger across his neck. Friends! Don't tell me about it. I just don't like shines. Yeah. A guy gestures with a thumb. That mean anything to you? No. Oh, I thought you was one of the boys. One of what boys? Shut up, Spike. Ah, uh, what's it, Diff? Uh, we got a little club, kind of. Branches all over the country. Yeah, when, when they get uppity, we, we kind of put them in their place. Oh, yeah. Look what's coming. Ray steps to the end of their row. Uh, this seat is taken. Sorry. She moves on. <laughs> she steps past a white woman to sit between her and a white man. Hey, maybe you'd like to come with us after the game. Shut up, Spike. Where are you going after the ball game? The Lodge decided to send a delegation. That's us. You hadn't ought to tell anybody. Oh, this guy's all right. We're going to call on Robinson as soon as the game is over. We don't like them boys playing ball around here. Not in this town. The Brooklyn man raises his thick eyebrows and smiles. In the Montreal dugout. Robinson! At the end of a line of players, Jackie goes to Hopper. Get out there, Robbie. He steps out. Then pauses on the top dugout step. He goes on as Hopper stands to look back at the crowd. Jackie holds his two bats and walks as something is thrown past him. He goes down on one knee leaning against the bats and waits. Later, Ray steps out of the stadium. She turns as two players leave in their street clothes, then looks back inside for Jackie. A door says, player's entrance, no admittance. She steps away along an outside wall around the corner from the conspirators. She stops short when they see her and retreats toward the player's entrance again. Jackie comes out. Let's go, darling, quick. What's the matter? They approach. Where you going, black boy? They try to walk off. Go on away, black boy. We're the welcoming committee. You'd better get out of here. No, Jackie. Go on. It just makes it tough for having you here. She gets away. We want to have a talk with you. We don't want you in this town, see? Looking around at them, he remembers Ricky. No matter what happens on the ball field, you can't fight back. That's going to be the hard part. You can't fight back. You better not play tomorrow, get me? One pokes him. Get me? Two players come out. Having any trouble, Jackie? No, no trouble. We'll just walk to the bus with you. One bully is shoved. Out of my way, you. As all three players walk away. Nice game today, Jackie. Thanks. Thanks a lot. He meets Ray and they walk off together. In another game, the scoreboard says Syracuse leads Montreal one to nothing at the top of the third. In the Montreal dugout, Shorty. Hopper carries a shoebox. A little present for you. Present? Yeah, here. Just what you need. Gee, Mr. Hopper, that's awful nice of you. He opens it. New pair of shoes. Mm, elevator shoes. Add an inch to you, keep you from hitting under the ball. Say, that's wonderful. That's a great idea. Thanks a lot, Mr. Hopper. Sure hope they'll work. As he puts them on, Hopper smirks at the other players, including Jackie, who smiles among them. Shorty gets the shoes tied and bumps his head on the dugout roof. Now watch that, Shorty. Remember, you're an inch taller now. Forgot all about it. Banner up! That's me. He walks off in his new shoes with soles an inch thick. Grinning, he shows them off to the catcher. Play ball! He steps up to the plate, tapping it with his bat, and takes a practice swing. His team watches. With his feet close together, he swings some more. On the mound, the Syracuse pitcher winds up and throws. Shorty hits the ball, which bounces past second for a hit. The team shifts awkwardly. Hopper spits tobacco, scratching the back of his neck. By the fifth inning, Montreal has scored five runs. Jackie fields the ball and throws it to first. Getting the third out, the Montreal team heads back to the dugout.
Jackie reaches the dugout and sits on the edge, watched by two white men in the front row. Hey there, big boy. What you all doing on a white man's field? You better get your carcass out of there before you get rolled out. One holds a black cat. Here's a brother of yours, Jackie. Why don't you take him along? He wants to get into baseball, too. <laughs> he drops the cat on a leash. <laughs> Jackie sits up and looks at them. When he stands, the men jerk back. But he picks up the cat and cradles it in his arms, petting it. He takes the cat into the dugout and sits on the bench with it, stroking the top of its head and neck. Another time, he stands at the plate waiting to hit. From an opposing dugout, hey, Jackie. a player has a shoeshine box. Give me a shine! <laughs> Hopper watches as Jackie keeps getting verbal abuse from the crowd and opposing players. Hey, Sambo, do you want to wash your dirty ears? Uh -huh. One munches on watermelon. All liver lips. Toss them frilly teeth. Hey, Jackie, where'd you get that Marcel? Max, go back, clean up. Hopper watches Jackie just keep playing. He hits a pitch, and the crowd cheers. In Ricky's office, a chalkboard is full of players' names. We'll exercise our option on Clover. Right, right, Clover. In. A man moves a name from Montreal to Brooklyn, as Ricky watches with Hopper and Shaughnessy. And that's all. And that's all? Good. That's fine. Then Robinson stays in Montreal. Mm, for the time being. Brooklyn and Montreal will train together in Panama. We'll have plenty of chance to see everybody. Trying not to smile, he glances at Shaughnessy. Well, you do what you think best, Branch. But I'll tell you this. We've had record attendance all over our league this year. And if there's any possible way of leaving Robinson in Montreal another season... Well, I think maybe we might. Boy like that ought to play every day. And we've got Burwell at second base. That's fine, Branch. That's wonderful. All our fans want him. Sarge, I think they're making too much out of an ordinary ball player. Don't you think, Clay? He led the league in hitting. Oh, minor league. And we won the Little World Series, too. Oh, I'm not complaining, Clay. It's just that I don't want to burden a fair ball player with the responsibilities of a superman. Of course, Jackie might hit big league pitching. But suppose he did come up. How do we know that he could... Well, that he wouldn't get out of hand. How do we know? Mr. Ricky. Hopper stands. Mr. Ricky, you don't have to worry none about that boy. He is the greatest competitor I ever saw. And what's more, he's a gentleman. Well, glad to hear it. Ricky smokes with a smirk. Later, players warm up on a field. Title, Panama. A player squats in a catcher's stance. Right in the face with it. The pitcher throws it to him. That's close, but not close enough. Here it is, right here. Right there, right through the middle. The pitcher winds up and throws again. That's close enough. Turn it back. Ricky watches with Hopper and a man in a Dodger uniform, then turns left to look further into the field where Jackie fields a ground ball with his bare hand and tosses it to another player to throw to another. You made up your mind on Robinson yet? I think we let him stay in Montreal another year. It's great with me, Mr. Ricky, but I think you're making a mistake. We got Burwell on second, remember? Burwell or no Burwell? Besides, it caused trouble. Trouble? Yeah. There's that petition, you know. Petition? What petition? Well, some of the boys... Half a dozen of your Brooklyn players have signed a petition. They don't want Robinson on your ball club. They don't, huh? Get hold of the men that signed that petition and bring them to my room at 8 o'clock tonight, you understand? Yes, sir. That night, he paces among the sitting players. And you call yourselves Americans. Who's your leader? Who started this? Tony, you signed that petition. You want to deny Robinson the right to play baseball? I just don't want to be on the same team with him. Were you born in the United States? Yes, sir. And your parents, where were they born? My father was born in Italy. And your mother? She was born in Italy, too. They came to America before you were born? Yeah. And your father, what did he work at when he first came to this country? On the railroad. He was a laborer. 
Your mother, did she work too? She, uh, she worked in a shirt factory. Your father was an immigrant laborer. Did anybody get up a petition to keep him from working on the railroad? Not that I know of. Did anybody try to stop your mother from working in the shirt factory? Tony shakes his head. Your parents came to this country from Italy and were allowed to work as free people. And yet you, a child and beneficiary of that freedom, want to deny the same opportunity to an American whose parents and grandparents and great-grandparents have been in this country for 200 years. Is that right? Ricky steps to another player. How about you, Dolby? Would you have the courage to strip to the waist and tell Robinson that to his face, here, behind closed doors? Tell him to his face that he can't play on the same ball team with you. Tell him you're not going to let him earn his living as a ball player. Answer me, sir. Mr. Ricky, I wasn't thinking. I didn't think. And that, sir, explains why your teammates call you Ironhead. Yes, sir. He turns to two others. Carbon, you've been in baseball a long time. Do you want to play on the Dodgers with Robinson? No, sir, I don't. Will you play with Robinson? I'd rather not, sir. Would you like to have your contract transferred to another club? Yes, sir, I would. I may accommodate you, sir. All right, men. I respect your right to petition. But I do question and I will fight any petition that denies any American the right to earn his living in a game that is supposed to represent the democratic principles of sportsmanship and fair play. Do you understand me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. That's all for tonight. The players stand to leave. Your suits are in your lockers. There's a ball game tomorrow. I hope I'll see you there. In uniform. Next day, the modest stands are less than half full. Players hid and throw balls around. Jackie! Jackie approaches Ricky and Hopper. Yes, sir. Jackie Montreal is starting a 12-game series with the Dodgers. Yes, sir. Take this. A different fielder's glove. During that series, I want you to play first base for Montreal. First base? Mr. Ricky, I've never played first base. We're protected at second base, Jackie. We've got Burwell. Brooklyn can use a good first baseman. Oh, I see. Go out there and show them. Run their legs off. Yes, sir. I sure will. He tosses the old glove and punches the new one. Later in the game, Montreal is in the field and Brooklyn is at bat. The Montreal pitcher throws high and gets the ball back. The umpire stands behind him to his right. The Brooklyn player bunts. Jackie runs in for it. Picks it up and throws it to the man covering first. Hopper nudges Ricky. Fine play. Ricky rubs his side, smiling. The next Dodger comes up to bat. The pitcher throws and the batter hits it to the infield. The shortstop stops the ball, gets a hold of it and throws it to first, where Jackie jumps to catch it and tag the runner. A great play! Ricky feels another nudge from Hopper. A little dangerous. I think I'll move over to the Brooklyn side. Ricky gets up and walks off. The Dodgers leave their dugout, including Carpen. Carpen! He stops for Ricky. You said you wanted to keep Robinson off the Brooklyn team, didn't you? Yes, sir. Then why do you keep feeding him those big fat ones? Fat ones? I ain't feeding him no fat ones. No, then how'd he get three hits off you? Just lucky. All right, Carpen. He's up first in this inning. If you still want to keep him off the Brooklyn team, I'll tell you how he can do it. Strike him out. Okay. Watch me. Carpen walks to the mound. Play ball! Carpen winds up and throws. Jackie falls back to duck. Carpen gets the ball back. Jackie stands, brushing himself off, and gets back in his stance. Carpen throws, and Jackie hits. An outfielder runs back, but the ball goes over the wall and some trees. Later, an American stands. She sits by the Brooklyn trucker. Hey, Robinson, where is it? 
Jackie plays first for the Dodgers. He keeps warming up. At microphones in the press box, two men confer. One of them watches a clock reading 1.30 and cues the other. Greetings from Ebbets Field. They call it Big League Baseball, folks, because you've got to be bigger and better to stay up here. That's the problem confronting Jackie Robinson at this very minute as he goes to bat for the first time in a big league game. He reads a script. Oh, yes, I know he's done all right in training. I've seen the papers, too. But that was only practice. From now on, it's for keeps. There's a little man upstairs in the press box who's known, among other things, as the official scorer. He watches like a hawk. He marks down everything. He'll make a mark for every move that Jackie Robinson makes, good or bad. And not only the official scorer's eyes are on the Negro rookie, the whole world is waiting. Everybody wants to know if Branch Rickey has made a mistake. Will they be able to say, I told you so? Let's see. Jackie carries two bats toward the plate, tossing one away, then takes a stance with his bat high. He lets a pitch go by. He wipes the palms of his hands on his hips and gets ready again. The opposing pitcher nods to the catcher, then winds up and pitches. Getting a hit, he runs over first base and onto second. Beating the ball thrown there, he runs onto third, sliding to beat the throw there. In the stands. He made it! He's got a triple! So what? What do you mean, so what? Later in the locker room, Jackie goes to a suit jacket hanging on a door. Wearing a shirt and trousers, he hangs his uniform on a hook, then takes down the jacket and puts it on, stepping to a player getting a massage from a trainer. Later at home, he gets one from Ray. You'll lose your tightness in a few days. It's just nerves, that's all. I just can't get on a shifting my feet. I missed the bag completely today in the third inning. They'd only let you play second base where you belong. We've got Burrell at second base. First is where they need me. But if you can't get on to it, honey, and it worries it's you... It's got me worried, all right. It's got me where I'm not hitting, either. Anyhow, you're still the best base runner. They can't take that away from you. Yeah, but you can't steal first. Ow! What have you got in those hands? Steel springs? They're nurses' hands, remember? Well, they better nurse me out of this slump, or Mr. Ricky will be looking for a new boy. Later, at first with a coach. No, oh, Jackie, don't wait till you feel the bag under your foot. Do it all in one motion. Oh, I just can't seem to get the hang of it. Try another one. He throws a ball toward the mound and waits to get it back. When he does, he steps on the base. That's worse. Here, let me show you how. He steps aside for Dalby. You almost had it last time. When you missed the bag, you kicked back for it like this. As the ball is thrown, he steps on the base without reaching. Here, you try it. Thanks. Trading places again. Jackie throws toward the mound. As the ball comes back, he steps smoothly on the base. That's the idea. All you have to do is practice now. Dalby walks off, and Jackie watches him. Why do you want to do that? If I can't make the grade at first base, he'd have his old job back. He's a team player, Jackie. Jackie nods and throws the ball again. Later, the crowd starts settling in their seats in the press box. Uh, and the weatherman apologizes for the recent rain. Well, let's get serious, folks. They can't say that Branch Rickey hasn't given Jackie Robinson a king-sized opportunity in staying in big league baseball. On that last road trip, when the California boy wasn't hitting too well, some of the out-of-town sports writers said that Jackie should have been out of there. He had a little trouble with first base, playing it and reaching it. He just couldn't come up with that extra base hit. Right now, I see Jackie stepping into the box. He stands at the plate, ready to hit. All right, bring it in out there. Come in. Here we go. He lets a pitch go by. Oh, come on, babe. He wipes dirt on his hands and gets ready for the next pitch. He hits, in the stands. What happened to you? The woman grins at the Brooklyn trucker. He looks around and sits back down. In the press box. Keep your fingers crossed, folks. It may be that the rookie Jackie Robinson is a big league ball player after all. But he had us all worried, didn't he? Going to the plate 19 straight times without a hit. 
But the pendulum can swing both ways, and it may be that Jackie has started on a hitting streak now. In baseball, it's not who or what you are, but can you play the game? And Jackie Robinson sure is playing. He's at the plate again. And hits again. The crowd stands. In the dugout. Well, Dolby, he's hitting again. Yeah, we might win the pennant now. Later, Jackie is up again. The crowd rises. Jackie slides into second as the baseman gets the ball. On the ground, the baseman swings at Jackie, who turns away. The umpire struggles to pull him off Jackie. You're out of the game, Kelly. They really well, knocked me down. The Dodgers in the dugout stand. Did two spike the Cubs charge top right three sliding into second? That was an accident. So is this an accident? They're all accidents. Let's get out there. Tony and Carpen head out. Next time I get on base, watch out for Spike. Go on, get off the field. Maybe you better get Robinson off the field. Yeah, get him off. Get him out of here. Carpen steps up. Anybody here looking for a little argument? Yes, I am. You're out of the game, too. Me? Yes, you. Hey, what's the big idea? You didn't even off. start off the you. Why, you've been on me all season. Come on. Tony pulls Carpen away. You heard me. Where the hell that guy? Come on, get out. Play ball. The players go back to their places, and the crowd settles. Another Dodger batter stands at the plate. He hits. Come on, Jack. Come on, come on, Jackie. Go ahead. Jackie runs over third and makes it home to score. The Brooklyn trucker happily cheers along with the other fans. Later, the Dodgers go into their locker room. Jackie enters and heads for his usual door. But his jacket isn't there. He looks around. Hey, Mike. What's happened to my clothes? I got them over here. Come here. I'll show them to you. He leads Jackie to a space like the other players have. I got a locker for you. Thanks. He puts his foot on a stool and unties his shoes. A newspaper headline reads, Dodgers can clinch pennant today. Fans gather outside Ebbets Field. Many head downstairs to their seats. The game goes on in the full stadium. In the press box. Well, the Brooklyn Dodgers really are pouring it on now. They're up at bat with one run behind in the ninth inning. And Brooklyn Hearts today have skipped more beats than an absent-minded policeman. Well, this boy has set fire to the league since midseason when he hits safely in 21 straight games, missing the league record by one. He's laid down 42 successful bunts, a prodigious number. He's a cinch to be voted the Rookie of the Year, incidentally. Now we've got a runner on second, the, the tying run, and Jackie Robinson is at the plate. He can't butt now. He's got to hit straight away. There are two out. Jackie stands at the plate, ready to hit. He swings and misses. Watch his glove, huh? Oh, get up there and hit the ball. Ray watches with Mac and his mother. Also in the stands. Come on, Jackie boy. Get a hold of one. Get it out of the ball. Get a hold of it. Jackie waits. And lets a high pitch go by. The pitcher shakes his head at the catcher. Then nods. Stretching and glancing back toward the runner at second. He pitches. Jackie lets it go. The pitcher gets the ball back, and Jackie goes into his stance. The pitcher throws, and Jackie passes it up. The catcher throws to the pitcher again. Jackie holds his bat high. The pitch comes. He hits and runs. As the Brooklyn trucker stands with other fans, the first runner crosses home plate, and Jackie is safe at second. In the press box. Well, the tying run scored on Jackie's base hit into center field. It's a new ball game now. Jackie Robinson on second base representing the winning run. And the crowd here has gone mad. The pitcher looks back at Jackie on second. Jackie inches away toward third. When the pitcher throws, Jackie runs for it. The catcher throws to third, but Jackie slides to beat it. The ball bounces away, so Jackie runs for home. He slides again. Hey! The crowd stands. Mrs. Robinson hugs Ray and turns to Mac. 
the Brooklyn trucker turns to two black people. The Dodgers congratulate each other, shaking hands with Jackie. They file out of the dugout past Ricky, who shakes Jackie's hand. Jackie, congratulations. Thank you. Same to you. By the way, Mr. Ricky, there's something bothering me about that invitation to Washington. Do you really think I should go? Yes, Jackie, I do, to Washington. To the Senate, to the House of Representatives, to the American people. You've earned the right to speak. They want you to speak. About things on your mind. About a threat to peace that's on everybody's mind, Jackie. Now you can fight back. Later, in the Capitol building in Washington, Jackie testifies. I know that life in these United States can be mighty tough for people who are a little different from the majority. I'm not fooled because I've had a chance open to very few Negro Americans, but I do know that democracy works for those who are willing to fight for it, and I'm sure it's worth defending. I can't speak for any 50 million people. No one person can. But I'm certain that I and other Americans of many races and faiths have too much invested in our country's welfare to throw it away or to let it be taken from us. An image of the Statue of Liberty is shown beside Jackie. A black boy walks along a road. This is the Jackie Robinson story. But it is not his story alone, not his victory alone. It is one that each of us shares. A story, a victory that can only happen in a country that is truly free. A country where every child has the opportunity to become president or play baseball for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Titles, The End, and Eagle Lions Films release. Funding to purchase and make this educational program accessible was provided by the U.S. Department of Education. Contact the Department of Education by telephone at 1-800-USA-LEARN or online at www.ed.gov. The described and captioned media program provides services designed to benefit students who are blind, visually impaired, deaf, hard of hearing, and deaf blind. These services include a library of free loan described and captioned educational media, a clearinghouse of information related to educational media access, a gateway to internet resources related to accessibility, and a center for training and evaluation of any service provider desiring to appear on the DCMP's approved lists of description and captioning service providers. There are no user registration or service fees. Visit the DCMP at dcmp.org. The DCMP is funded by the U.S. Department of Education and administered by the National Association of the Deaf.